Welcome back to Lift Every Voice. I'm your host, Corey Coker, Brother Kanji. With me today, Ted Wynn. Yes, sir. You know, I want to do something that we've never done, and you can actually go to BET.com forward slash Lift Every Voice and, and post your comments and, and blog with us because I know you're going to have something to say after this. God and politics. We, we Earlier, we talked about balance, mm -hmm. but you said, no, you need to know what's going on in the world. Absolutely. Why? Because we live here and we are affected or impacted as a result of what happens. Now, this is probably where I will get the most pushback. My personal belief is that those of us who understand the kingdom of God, who are a part of it, should do things that are reflective of what those kingdom principles are. Sometimes we have a rub because that might be different than what's happening in the political spectrum. And so we live in a country that gives everybody the freedom and the liberty to do what they want to do. So sometimes it comes a rub when you have to vote certain ways about should certain things be okay because it's not a biblical premise behind it. And a lot of people find a rub with that. And I have to take a departure at that point because if, if we hold true to that, then we have to look at people who use the Bible to outlaw, to outlaw um, you know, interracial marriage, right. who use the Bible to outlaw um, black people being free in this country. So it gets real slippery when you start to incorporate and infuse those things together. Not saying that we as people who you know, are believing in God should change our views or our stances. I don't, I'm not saying that, but I think you have to be really careful about how you apply those things when it comes to people who do not believe like you believe. Do the Christian community believe that a man should be with a woman and a woman with a man? Or do the Christian community also believe that a man can be with a man? First of all, I'm, I'm not going to speak for the Christian community because within the Christian community, both trains of thought do exist. And, you know, the argument from, for one will be that, you know, there's a biblical premise that states, you know, that marriage is between a man and a woman. Those who are on the opposing side would state that might be the tr true for you or that might be your interpretation of scripture, but there are people who do not ascribe to a biblical teaching or biblical theology who are citizens in this country who pay taxes who feel like I should have the right to do what I want to do and not be subject to what you believe because you're a Christian. So my thinking is that, you know, you, you have to find out where you fall and right. what works for you. I believe that a law is put in place to prevent you from imposing your will on me. So you can't take my car. You can't, walk, you can't break in my house. Right. You can't destroy my character. You can't take my life. It's not for, for you to tell me what I can't do. And I don't want to you know, speak for the Christian community, but as it relates to how I feel, I think that we have to, again, vote your conscience, but be informed about what that means. Right. You know, if you notice, he's in the hot seat. He didn't answer the question. <laughs> That's what politicians do. You know, we're talking God and politics for the first time. We'll lift every voice. Answer the question. The question is, do you, as a man of God, and I understand God and politics, yeah. do you believe that it's okay for a man and a man to be together? I think, as I've said before, that from the perspective of the church, mm -hmm. right? there is going to be a certain position. But I do believe that we live in a country where people should have the right to not be subjected to you know, the, the rules or the confines of other people. Right. So whatever that means for you is what it means for you. Right. As Michael Jackson said, you know, it's all L-O-V-E for me. So <laughs> I say, you know, if, if, if where you are is where you feel comfortable, that's on you. Like, that's not my position and I'm, I don't take a position to tell people how to feel. I grew up that way, being told how to feel, what to do, what was right, what was wrong, and I just felt like that was the wrong position. So now, I'm definitely much more, you know, like the president in the middle of the road, and I believe that you have to find your own voice, your own peace, your own consciousness, whatever that does mean for you. And if that means you subscribe to scripture, and, you know, you believe that the Bible says a certain thing, I think you live your life that way. The Bible says if something is sin to you, don't you do it. I think the, the inference there is that everything is not wrong to everybody. It depends on our cultural norms and how we're socialized, how we're conditioned, where we're from. Like, you know, some people grow up and you take your hat off when you go in the building. Other people don't even think about taking their hat off when they go, off, when they go in the building because it's not how they were raised. So for the person who was raised that way, they're going to feel conflicted. Is it right or wrong? I don't know, but it's wrong to them. So if that's where you feel comfortable, right. take your hat off. You know, the Word became flesh. The Scripture talks about how uh, His Word will not return back to Him void. I believe everything in the Bible, and I believe that when we live that, uh, people get free, people get set free. Mm -hmm. Jesus.